Today we're gonna cut this junk roof skin off the 280Z and replace it with this one. What's going on guys? It's Brian back with Block Garage and once again we're working on the 280Z. This roof has been an issue since we picked up the car. We knew that this sunroof hole had to be replaced, not running the sunroof. Once we took the windshield off, we found all of this rust here along the edge. Could be repaired. We could fill that hole in, but I think that's a terrible idea. And that is why, a couple weeks ago, Lila and I went down to Connecticut and picked up this roof skin that is in much better shape. Mostly because it doesn't have the giant hole for the sunroof in it. Hey guys, before we get started, I just want to interject something real quick. You'll see throughout most of this video, I'll be referencing using that blue roof we picked up from Connecticut. That was the plan to put that on, but that plan changed, and you'll see why later in the video, why we got this roof on here from Resurrected Classics instead of that other roof. Just keep that in mind as you're watching the video. So yeah, let's jump right in it. Let's start getting this roof skin off and getting the new one on. All right, I got off all the paint around the seams so we could see where all the spot welds are. You can see we got spot welds all along here all along the back edge, obviously on that edge too. And then there's also spot welds all along here, but they're very hard to see because of the rust. And down, down here, we're not gonna go this far down. Back here, we have a factory seam right here. You can see it splits right there. And there's actually lead filler right here, so we gotta take that off. Up front here, I don't see a seam anywhere up here. I'm planning on just going down to right here-ish, because I don't need to go any further down. So I don't know if there's a lead seam here anywhere. I don't see anything here because you'd see a split in the sheet metal. And it looks like it's sawed all the way down. But uh, yeah, so we gotta do a lot of spot weld drilling to get all of these out. But first, we need to get rid of this lead here because we don't want to be cutting that and making dust fly everywhere. It's not good for you. So from what I see, the best thing to do with that is to just heat it up with a torch. Since it's very low melting point, it'll just run right off or uh, just get a wire brush and get it off. That way, get that out of the way and we don't have to worry about it because obviously lead's not good for you so i'll probably wear a mask i don't know if i need to but i'll throw my mask on just in case and some gloves and we'll get that off real quick and then we're going to start cutting all those spot welds crazy I had no idea they used that much lead on this body seam right here like there's a good three-eighths of an inch of lead in there right where that seam is I figured it was just a little kind of a light coating like you would do with body filler but let's get the lead off the other side and we'll move on So I think actually what I want to do along the drip rail here is to cut it out with my cutoff disc like this instead of drilling it because generally when you drill through with the spot weld cutter, you go into the panel on the back side a little bit no matter how careful you are. And I want to make sure I keep that as good as I can on the car. That way I don't have to fix it. I don't have to fill in any holes or anything with weld before we go put the new roof skin on. I think I can do a better job with this cutoff disc just going like this. And uh, yeah, we'll try that right here. To be honest, I find this much easier than using that belt sander. Now I figured I got surface rust and some pitting all the way down to right about here. So I figured might as well just 
replace it all the way down to there. That way I don't need to try and patch this or fix it or anything. We got this all broke free down here. My A pillar here, skin is all free. I haven't touched up here yet, but you get the idea. I'm gonna go and grind all of these off all the way along. This edge, like I mentioned, is gonna be a pain because I can't see them. A lot of grinding and or drilling depending on where I am and how I feel like doing. But let me go get this off and, or ready to come off and then I'll catch up with you guys when we're ready to pull it off. I got this most of the way popped off. I got it all the way along here. The eight pillar is good. Across the hatch opening is good. But this corner here I was struggling with was not coming apart and I just discovered there is actually a lead filled seam right here, right at the very top of the eight pillar. So let me get that lead all melted off here and the other side and then we'll continue on. Now it's actually loose. I'm gonna work my way across and then we'll get the other side. Look at that, we got it off. All right, so this is not set up how I thought it was. I thought the roof skin came down and it was one piece all the way down in the A pillar down to here, this joint, and it is not. We've actually got another piece that starts right here goes down the A pillar down to there. It's not part of the roof skin. The roof skin just sits on top right here where that lead seam was. If I had known that, I probably would not have gone all the way down here and cut this because this, you know, I thought we were gonna have to cut this somewhere here anyway, and we did not. This little surface rust here could have been kept there and just cover it with rust encapsulator. I would have had to fix a little bit up here anyway uh, because this is quite pitted and rotten right here. I probably, if I had known that it was set up like that, I probably would have just left this down here, like I said, and just done a little patch right here. Same thing on the other side. The other side's the same situation. Uh, but we did not do that, because I didn't know. And But that's all right. Um, doesn't really change much, because uh, we have that roof right there that we can scavenge parts from. All right, spend some time cleaning this up. Everything looks about like I expected it to. This A pillar is fine here. It was just light surface rust on the inside. Um, not a big deal. Obviously I can't get down in there. Uh, so we'll just shove a bunch of rust encapsulator down in there and hope for the best. This, I'm definitely going to need to do some patching along. You know, like right here you can see it's pretty flaky. Uh, I'm sure there's a little bit on that side. A little bit over here, but that's not too bad. Um, I mean, that, that should be should be easy the back all looks good as i expected this all cleans up very nice i just cleaned it up real quick uh, we'll do a much better thorough job before we actually finish up here and stick the skin on and actually i'm i'm thinking just just popped in my head i think i might do a little bit of stitch welding here before we put the roof skin back on just to stiffen everything up because we're going to be stitch welding the whole car anyway so I might as well do this while I have access to it. I'll literally never be able to get at these seams again after today. But, oh, and back here. This definitely needs some work back here. So we can cut that out of the other roof 
easy enough. But before I do that and weaken this even more than it is right now, we're gonna replace this piece of the A-pillar right here. Got my replacement panel all ready to go. I got this part coated in rust encapsulator, ground down where we got a weld, and then put some weld through primer on, got some weld through primer on the back of this. So let's get it tacked in place. Easy enough, yeah? Got all fully welded, obviously it needs to be cleaned up. But we're not gonna worry about that just yet. Let's go make our piece and get that piece in on the other side. That way our A-pillars are back solid, 100% strong, don't have to worry about anything. Got that piece ready to go, just like the other side. So let's get that welded in real quick. Oh, that was a terrible snap. Try it again. There we go. Got that all welded in just like the other side. Super easy. Again, have not ground down the welds at all. But I also cleaned up everything all around here that needs to be cleaned up. You know, this was all very surface rusty here. And the front too. So what we need to do next is repair any rusty sheet metal along here. And we got to get that section underneath there where we saw that it's real bad that's all that needs to be done underneath but before i go and do that i want to stitch weld this so i've cleaned up all the joints here you know this doesn't really need to be cleaned up It'd be better off leaving the factory coating on there but all these joints here of sheet metal and somewhat along here, i mean this is just a little lip that sits on the back but i think i'm gonna do a little bit with that too uh, even down here, this lip right here, or the seam, I guess, where this panel that goes down here meets the actual roof structure. I think we're going to do a little bit of stitch welding there. Now, I did the best I could at cleaning all these up, but it's essentially impossible to get all of the rust off unless I was dipping the car or sandblasting it. I have no interest in sandblasting it. So I've done the best I can, like I said. Yeah, I'm gonna get to just doing some stitch welding. And for anybody that doesn't know, the reason that we stitch weld is not necessary. However, it very drastically helps stiffen up the chassis, which I wanna do. If I don't do it now, it will literally never get done because this is not gonna be pulled back apart. Once this is painted, I don't wanna worry about stitch welding it, you know, a couple years from now. So, you know, or I don't wanna to be to the point where I wish I had stitch welded it while I had the opportunity. And all these ones underneath the roof skin would be literally impossible to get to. So I'm gonna do these ones here while we have it off. There's also a handful underneath we're gonna do here and here. Uh, oh, I gotta clean this one up. I forgot to do these ones here. Actually, it looks like we might have a little bit of rust we gotta take care of there. We'll have to see how that is. And I'm gonna get that started. So that right there is pretty much what we're looking for. Just a short bead across. Uh, I did end up having to do a little bit of tacking along here because there was a gap and I wanted to make sure I got this corner really good. The corner of your roof is where you really need to worry about making sure it's strong. It's where the weakest point would be. Now down here, you can see that didn't weld very good because there's still a bunch of crap in there. So I'm gonna try and clean that up a little bit better than that.
Now with all of that stuff stitch welded, we need to address the rust on the inside of the A-pillars. That's a little bit down here. I went and just stole some bits from the other roof. So that's gonna go there just like that. So we'll get that cut out and then probably do the same thing over here. I don't know. Is that worth doing anything with? We'll see. Might do the same thing there. And then we gotta hop on the other side. The other corner is the worst corner. So I figured we'd start with the easier one first. we go got that all done all ground down looking nice can't even tell it was there I checked this here it's nice and solid it's got some pitting in it but we'll put some rust encapsulator on that and not worry about it so now we got to do up here this definitely needs to be done and quite a bit more on here um, but this isn't really the focus of the video. The video is supposed to be about changing the roof skin. So instead of spending a bunch of time doing this other stuff, I'm going to go get that done off camera and I'll catch back up with you guys once we're ready to move on and put the roof skin on. All right, just wanted to catch you guys up with where I'm at. I have fixed everything underneath here. This one is good. This one down here is good. This was the worst one. I basically replaced this whole part right here, uh, but I did it in pieces because I was worried about strength and having this roof warp or something if I took like that whole triangle corner piece out. Uh, so I did it in a couple pieces, but it worked fine. And now what I'm doing is replacing the rusty lip on here. Again, I could do this whole thing basically as one, but I was worried about, again, strength. I don't want something warping. So... I'm doing it in three pieces so I did this little piece here and then we got it's good from here to here and then we got a bunch of rust all the way down to here short little good piece and then we got to replace this here I just I just prefer doing it in multiple pieces just so that it lessen the chance of something warping uh, but all I'm doing is I cut it off the other roof you know this is one of the pieces cleaned it up well this piece isn't cleaned up but you know cleaned everything up primed it with the weld through primer on the back side and then we're just welding it along like we do anything else i'll just grind that down uh, pretty simple so i'm going to continue doing that and then we'll be ready for the roof skin and i'll show you guys the whole process of getting that on all right I think I'm finally ready to put that roof skin on. I have spent a ton of time getting this ready. I have at least a full day just fixing everything that needs to be fixed. Actually, I got more than that. I got a couple days here because we got all of this stuff here, both A pillars, everything that we did underneath and fixing this line here, doing all of the stitch welding, and just grinding down and yeah i a i spent way more time than i anticipated just prepping to put the roof skin on however i believe we are finally ready to test fit it check that out fitting on there perfect obviously we need a little bit of tweaking a little bit of adjustment so i need to pull it back off now though now that we know it's fitting great and we need to clean up everything perfectly um, all these edges have slight surface rust underneath 
make sure everything's straight because when you drill out those spot welds everything you know they it kind of it puts a little dent uh in the underside you know makes it a little wavy so we need to straighten that back out um we need to pop these dents back out here because uh, it would be a lot easier to do when this is just sitting on the bench uh, we need to clean all this edges up get all the remaining lead off of here same on the other side but other than that i'm very happy it looks like it's fitting exactly how we need which is you know it's why we went with replacing the roof because it'd be a lot easier than trying to fix all that stuff and fill that sunroof hole in um, would not have looked good but just the fact that the car has a solid roof without a stupid sunroof hole amazing all right i got everything cleaned up to where i'm happy with it we got that all nice and clean up obviously i haven't got the the top of it because i don't need to right now uh, it will get all stripped and everything when we're ready to start doing the body work but got this ready too now there's little pits and everything that i cannot get out um I'm not going to get out and that is where rust encapsulator comes into play so i've been using this in similar places to this and it works really good and actually i was using eastwood's regular rust encapsulator i ran out and just picked up some of this rust encapsulator plus and there's actually a noticeable difference it's only a couple of bucks extra per can i believe uh, and you can get it in gallons and quarts and everything if you want to spray it with a gun but this stuff works very well i can tell i can tell even a noticeable difference between the regular rust encapsulator and the plus um highly recommend you guys pick some of this stuff up and everything that i use or most things that i use i've been sticking them down in the video description so if you need a link to something just uh check the video description and all my tools and supplies and everything i've been sticking down there you can just click that and it'll take you right to it uh most of the stuff's on amazon so it's easy to buy but we're ready to put this stuff on and I'm going to spray this on now because obviously we cannot get to this once the roof is on. You cannot get to this surface here. And then what we'll do, you can't weld through this obviously. So when we're ready to weld, I will just clean off the areas where I'm going to put the spot welds on. That way we keep the maximum protection from this stuff everywhere. And then we can spray those areas with the weld through primer and then weld it on. Also what I need to do, there was seam sealer here at this seam so i'm gonna put that back and then it's time to put the roof on i'd recommend wearing a respirator or at least a mask with this stuff because it smells terrible and i'm sure it's not good for you to breathe So we're going to be using Eastwood Side Solid Seam Sealer for this. Uh, for everything I read, it is very good quality. I have used it once and it, you know, it seems good, spreads good and everything. I do generally like to smooth it out by hand also. I just think it, it looks nicer, although again, this is getting covered up, so just a preference. As usual, got way more on here than I needed. Alright guys, well it's been a few weeks, a month or so since I recorded all of that last footage of getting the 280Z roof ready to be welded on. It is 100% ready to just weld the roof skin on at this point, but I had to take a break and there's a good reason for that. As you can see, we got a nice big box here from Resurrected Classics. Max, he's the owner, he messaged me and said he's got a new roof skin that they're coming out with. This is going to be available soon that he wants me to put on the 280Z. And I said, well, yeah, I'll take that opportunity for sure. So he had to take it to Zcon, which was a couple weeks ago, so they could show it off. And then he shipped it right over to me for free. I paid nothing for this, so thanks, Max. Now, I haven't even taken it out of the box yet, other than I just opened it up real quick to peek in, make sure it wasn't damaged in shipping or anything, and it looks fine. So we're gonna pop that out here in just a second. We'll look over the whole roof, and then we'll get started on the process of welding it on. Uh, well you guys can see it here but this thing looks amazing i mean it looks obviously we don't have it on the car yet but i mean it looks flawless
So I just pulled out the new old roof skin that we had picked up and did some quick measurements and everything seems to match up perfectly between that one, the OEM one, and this one from Resurrected Classics. So that's a very good sign. You know, it, hopefully it'll just drop right on there and, you know, be a perfect fit and there won't be a ton of fabrication making it work, which looking at it, I mean, this thing, the quality on this thing is amazing. Like I'm, I'm incredibly impressed by how good this thing looks. So it looks like, you know, right now it should drop right on. Obviously we won't know until we actually go and throw it on the car. So let's do that right now, see how well it fits on the car and go from there. Oh, by the way, I don't need this roof skin anymore. So anybody wants this, let me know. Uh, it'll be for sale. Send me a message on YouTube or Facebook or something, Instagram, whatever. Just let me know if you're interested. Shipping probably will not be very cheap, but you know, maybe we can work something out. It's 100% ready to go, weld on. Um, there are some minor blemishes on top that gotta be, you know, it, it's an old roof. It's a 50 year old roof, so it's gonna have some issues. It had some dents back here. But I got it most of the way smoothed out, so it's ready, literally ready to be welded on. All you need to do is weld it on. I've even got the holes ready to be spot welded. So anyways, yeah, for sale, let me know if you want it. Hold this on, yeah, the fitment looks very good. I did measurements from here to here, you know, to make sure that at least the windshield gap is perfect. And that looks good, looks spot on, so we're happy with that. I think I might wanna grab my hatch though and throw it on here just to make sure that it fits right. You know, I don't wanna get that all welded on and have like a massive gap back here or too tight or something. So I'll probably do that. But overall, you know, the, the fitment looks amazing. I mean, it fit right into my drip rails here. The spacing on the front's good. So I'm very happy with this, fits great, but let's just double check with that hatch real quick. Now that fitment back here is perfect. It's right on. I just threw the hatch back on obviously real quick, just so we could see it's not bolted down. The hinges aren't even bolted down. That's why we got tape here, just to hold it on so it doesn't fall off. But that gives us our gap here and it's perfect. It's right on. So. There's really not much work I'm gonna have to do to get this to fit. So let's get that pot back off there, get it prepped, and we'll be ready to weld it on. Well, here we go, got it all ready to go. I punched my holes in it from our spot welds all the way around. Got some weld through primer on the back side. So it's ready to go. I spent quite a bit of time getting this to fit. Perfect, exactly how I want. Did a lot of measuring, remeasuring. Threw the hatch back on just to make sure our body line was perfect and it's right straight across. So the fitment of this thing is great. I'm very happy with how this fits. I really didn't have to do anything to get this to fit right. You know, just a little tweaking here and there. I got it stuck on with my Clecos and some self tappers in through here because obviously the Clecos would hit on the hatch. So that wouldn't have worked. I'm sure once you get this painted and smoothed out all back here and and everywhere. You won't even be able to tell that it's not the factory roof. But yeah, this looks like it'll be a really good possibility for anybody that needs a roof skin for their S30 because, you know, like mine, we had that giant gaping sunroof hole in it and we don't want that. So anyways, it's time to get that welded on. So let's get started. So now we're just gonna run around and spot weld in all those holes we drilled in here. You do wanna make sure you clamp this nice and tight where you're gonna be welding. You can buy special spot weld pliers that'll keep it nice and tight. I usually just use a couple pair of regular vice grips. It generally works. Over here, if you gotta do this though, you're gonna want something else, something like this, because there's that drip rail lip here. But as long as you keep it tight. I'm using, for anybody that hasn't seen it, a Millimatic 211 welder. Uh, it's a very nice welder. And I run 030 wire just because that's what I had. And that's what I've gotten used to. So anyways, let's, uh, let's weld these all in.
Now we do have to weld this joint and this joint up all the way across. We want a nice strong weld right there. I'm not sure if I'm going to lead these again. They were before. I don't know. People say it might crack. I'm not sure. I'm going to do some research. But for now, we're just going to weld across it and grind it down. And there we go, it all came out very nice, super easy to weld on. We're good all the way around. Might have mentioned it before, but I think I'm probably gonna put lead back here and over there, end up at our joint up here. At least that's probably the best idea. I do know it can flex right here and crack if you don't use lead. Uh, although I don't know how much flex I'll get with those upgraded frame rails, but you know, I'm hoping, I gotta do some research. I'm thinking somebody must make a replacement material that's not lead, just because lead's dangerous to use. But maybe not. If not, we'll we'll figure it out. I'll do some research. Uh, but I think that's probably the best idea is to either use lead or some lead replacement. But yeah, all ready to go. Just need to grind all of our welds down, see if we got any small pinholes or anything that got to be filled in, and we're good to go. Now, for anybody that hasn't seen me grind down welds, I've done it a ton on the channel. Uh, but basically what I like to use is a cutoff disc with my little Milwaukee right angle die grinder. Just get it down most of the way like this. We'll just kind of go in here like that, you know, get down most of the weld with, with that. And then where we need to just use a little sanding disc. Obviously I don't think I'll be able to fit that in the drip rail here. Uh, but you know, areas down here like this or up here, I will. So we'll get it as smooth as we can with this without digging down into and gouging the sheet metal and then swap over to that sanding disc. There we go guys, what do you think? I think it turned out fantastic. It fits nearly perfect. Uh, I didn't have any real tweaking I had to do to get it to fit. The bends are nice and crisp. Everything just lined up perfect. I really, really am impressed with how well this fits, especially for it being a prototype. So big thanks to the guys at Resurrected Classics, especially Max, he's the one that hooked me up with this roof. You know, this is a pre-production roof. Max sent this to me free of charge to try out, make a video on. So huge shout out to those guys over at Resurrected Classics. If anybody needs a roof, which I know there's plenty of people that do, be on the lookout for this. I'm told it's going to be released soon. I don't know when and I don't know how much. He has not told me that. Uh, but if you're in need of a roof, you don't have to worry about whether this is going to fit well or not. Like I said, I didn't have any issues getting this thing to fit. But speaking of that, I do have that roof we picked up in Connecticut. If anybody wants that again, just let me know. We can work something out. I'll work with you on the shipping or if you're close enough by to come get it, you know, we'll figure it out. So just let me know. And really the install for one of these roof skins is not very hard. The most time spent was making sure 100% it was lined up before I went and tacked it in place. I probably have half the time I spent total in getting this roof skin on 
and just getting it lined up because I didn't want to obviously get it tacked in place in the wrong spot. That would totally mess things up, you know, in the future. But as far as the 280Z goes, this is a huge step. You know, I absolutely hated that huge gaping hole in the roof from the sunroof. Now that that's gone and we don't have to worry about that anymore, it is a huge relief. Actually, speaking of that, we can come over here and cross something else off. So there's not much rust left, as you can see, that we know about. Uh, I, I don't know where else there could be rust, at least on the car body. The hatch, I have discovered, does is going to need some work. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that now. Anyways, so this little part behind the dash cowl area, super easy. I probably won't even make a video about that just because it's so simple. And the rear bumper area, like I've mentioned before, we cannot do until the car is off the rotisserie. So we do not have much left to get this off the rotisserie. But speaking of that, plans for the next video, it's gotta be stitch weld in the chassis. I mean, I don't really have anything else left. That's pretty much it that's left before the car can be primed and undercoated and we can get it down off the rotisserie. Just some little stuff here and there, but that's the only big project. So that's probably what we're gonna do next. Plans do tend to change, so, uh, but I really wanna get this thing down off the rotisserie. But enough rambling, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of this roof, and if anybody else needs a roof, you know, like I said, keep on the lookout, resurrectedclassics.com. Uh, normal stuff, like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't. If you have, make sure you hit that bell notification button, and leave me a comment. I'll see you guys in the next video.